Welcome everybody to this uh, special round table called Enterprise 2.0, a look into the crystal ball. And first of all, thank you very much for your participation. My name is Hilma Shep from Global Media Relations. And uh, recently I uh, read a book in which I found two impressive statements that bring to my mind uh, today's topic very to the point. Number one, the quote, Many senior managers mistakenly believe Enterprise 2.0 is a product, like the latest Microsoft Office Suite. They don't realize that Enterprise 2.0 is not a cost center, but a state of mind, a revolutionary new way of managing companies and conducting business. Quote number two, meetings impose vertical authority. They establish status hierarchies. The Enterprise 2.0 model is feared corporations because it threatens status hierarchies. So first of all, SAP doesn't fear Enterprise 2.0. Second, we live Enterprise 2.0. And third, we develop for Enterprise 2.0. The next phase is Internet Bill 1240. And from a Schwabian perspective, we are just getting wise. Um, why is that such an important thing? Well, because at that time, uh, we think we've got enough experience to know what you really would like. And you still have enough energy left to go for it. And I think that's where the internet uh, is really just uh, taking off and Hilbert's trolls were very nice. So what are we going after? We are going after new versions, of course. We had um, the 1.0, uh, 2.0 first to best, and now the enterprise. And I'll try to touch five different questions. Number one is enterprise 2.0 the hype or a movement. Um, what characteristics can be found in the enterprise 2.0? Also, a very warm welcome from my side, um, which is, of course, well known for its simplicity and I think sharpness in developing products uh, that are easy to use, that are intuitive, that can be immediately grasped by the user. And on the other side, you see SAP, which comes from the transactional world, from knowing the business processes, compared with the metaphor of the production line that has been. Start by making a new way of fear, and I'm going to just type the title in the first line. Demo at SAP's Tagad. Hey, Steph, help. They only gave us eight minutes. I am used to having an hour. What are we going to do? Best Lars. And then I'm done with that first message, and I'm Stephanie to the wave. And now you can't see her screen, but um, she now can see the wave over in her inbox, and she's going to start replying to it down here. Now, if I wasn't online right now, this message, again, because the wave is a single shared object, this message would be waiting for me the next time I come in. But since we happen to both be online, I can see immediately what Stephanie is typing. It has a very nice effect that, unlike an email, you can do both offline or long-term time conversations and instant messaging type conversations. Stephanie says, let's not panic, we can do it, let's write a script together. Help, this is me panicking. Stephanie, try and make another reply here. You probably noticed that. Um, okay, so Stephanie is showing now that you can make replies anywhere in a wave, but you'll also notice that I actually see what Stephanie is typing character by character. We do that because in general, you can predict I'm going to end the phrase before I'm done saying that, and by showing character by character what Stephanie is saying, it works the same way. So in Wave, you can add messages anywhere you want in the Wave. We also let you edit a message after the fact. And in fact, somewhat surprisingly, we let you edit each other's messages, which has a nice effect. And in addition to email type conversations and instant messaging type conversations, you can also collaborate on content inside the same message. So let's suppose Steph and I try to let me add, are you online? Yes. Let me, let me add, let me add Alex as well. And we'll all go in in this top message here. Let me just hide Stephanie's message there. And we'll try and put together a script for our much too short demo. Like this. I'll start here and I'll type and start with a kind of key wave like this. And then Stephanie is editing there. And then start going. You can see that we're both editing the three of us, and Alex has it now. Um, all of us 
also uh, 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 editing the same message at the same time, which can appear a little chaotic at first, but we quickly get used to it, and it's sort of like letting humans parallelize their, parallelize their work just like computers can. It, it dramatically speeds up how fast you can do this. You can see we already have almost made the entire script here. There. Um, I did it quite a quick fly, I think. So what we want to do is um, reply to that thing again to make it a bit easier and chuck in another canvas, which is a so-called slipstream thing. And what it does for us is it enables us to monitor how the process performs using business objects technology. So if we start the, the underlying process now, this is a real uh, business process SAP NetWeaver business process management instance. We see in the same way where the model has been created, how the process performs in real time. So we see how many insurance contracts have been offered today, uh, the processing time per insurance contract. We see how many open home loan applications we have. We get a feedback with respect to the amount of people that work on that problem, and we get a bit of information on the home loan risk distribution. There's a couple of uh, higher risk home loans that we're issuing low and medium risks. Um, the point about this is that, uh, again, if we look at a take, take step back and look at the, at the entire business process management lifecycle, we want to be in a position to provide the end users with the power to design these processes, but also to get the feedback on how they behave so that they can take that knowledge and redesign the processes if necessary up here again and go through the deployment cycle again. So I will just follow up with one fairly short demonstration of a related uh, prototype, because one question that might occur to you um, as you start trying to use these tools is, well, who can I collaborate with? First, uh, the first question I have when I receive my Google Wave invite is, oh, great, who else has Google Wave that I can actually go and use this with? Too many people in the audience have the same problem. So uh, this is uh, so our social network analyzer prototype, unless I have the same network gremlins as everybody else. Um, and it's a single view of relationships across the organization. Today, relationship information is siloed across lots of different systems. There's the HR system, but there's also the CRM system, there's email distribution lists, and then there's real world contacts between people. <coughs> so this demo, you can go and play with it yourself. It's online, uh, SMA demo on demand com. And you might recognize this interface on the left-hand side. It's very similar to the SAP Business Objects Explorer, faceted navigation. It brings in information from lots of different systems. And then I can start browsing that relationship information. If I want to see everybody in Palo Alto, I simply click on it. If I want to see everybody working on the Titan project, I can do that. I can say, okay, Dan, um, you know, maybe I should collaborate with Dan. Let's get some information about him. And then what's, um, who does he, who are his business contacts, but also who does he report to? Oh, he reports to Mark Bio, I can see that point of view. And you'll see that Mark has different relationships. He's also a member of a different steering committee. So we can really navigate across all of the different levels of organization relationship that you find between <coughs> people in organization. And then once I've found somebody interesting that I want to talk to, I can say, well, how, how do I relate to that person? Well,